The gentlewoman from California, Ms. Waters, is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I yield myself such time as I may consume. Nice. I rise today in strong opposition to H.R. 3193, legislation that would gut the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, an agency that has been a critical and effective advocate for our nation's consumers. Today's vote is just the latest chapter in a relentless Republican attack on consumer protection. Since opening its doors in 2011, the CFPB has gone to bat for those who have been subject to the deceptive practices of unscrupulous financial institutions. And though it has been immensely successful, Republicans have tried to undercut it in every way possible. Mr. Ter Chairman, in just over two years, CFPB's enforcement actions have resulted in over $3 billion being directly refunded to more than 9.7 million consumers and service members. The CFPB has ensured that all consumers have fair and transparent access to consumer financial products and services. It has written important mortgage rules that prevent lenders from engaging in the risky and irresponsible practices that led to the collapse of the housing market and fueled the 2008 global financial crisis. And it continues to go after industries and institutions that for years have not been held accountable for abusive and deceptive practices. The CFPB ensures that the tens of millions of consumers who interact with large consumer reporting agencies, debt collectors, payday lenders, and non-banks originating mortgage loans have an advocate in their corner. In fact, in fiscal year 2013, the CFPB was a party in 13 enforcement actions related to deceptive marketing, unlawful debt collection, discrimination on the basis of age, unlawful charging of fees, and fraudulent mor mortgage relief schemes, among other violations. Since the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau opened its doors, more than 269,000 individual consumer complaints have been received. And it has stood up for our nation's active duty military, who so bravely serve us, returning more than $12.5 million to them under the Military Lending Act. Just yesterday, CFPB announced a lawsuit against a large for-profit college chain, accusing it of preying on students by pushing them into high-cost loans, very likely to end in default. But my friends on the opposite side of the aisle don't believe that we should have a consumer advocate in government. They would prefer that these unscrupulous actors continue to take advantage of consumers without interference. And the simple fact is that H.R. 3193 would accomplish this goal, obstructing the CFPB's ability to protect consumers from deceptive marketing, unlawful debt collection, lending discrimination, overcharge fees, and other illegal activity. The bill does so by undermining CFPB's leadership ending its autonomy and tying its funding to congressional appropriations, among other ways. In fact, Republicans have brought this bill to the fore claiming a cost savings, but they know that the only way a savings is realized is by slashing the budget of the CFPB, the sole agency charged with consumer financial protections. But that's not all. The provisions included in this measure would eliminate the position of the CFPB director in favor of some five-member commission that would increase bureaucracy, encouraging infighting, and encumber uh, its ability to take action on behalf of consumers. It would water down the CFPB's rulemaking authority by lowering the bar for overturning its rules. And many of the amendments offered today would make this bill even worse. For example, the measure offered by Congressman DeSantis would repeal the Bureau's exclusive rulemaking authority, dispersing responsibility for protecting consumers among the same regulators who failed miserably in this task 
in the run-up to the financial crisis. It's striking to listen to my friends on the opposite side of the aisle talk about the importance of consumer protection and then push a measure that is an obvious attempt to completely undermine and obstruct the CFPB's ability to protect consumers, students, seniors, and, uh, seniors and service members. If holding the Bureau accountable to its mission to protect American consumers truly is a Republican's goal, then why are we considering a bill which is strongly opposed by more than 100 organizations with long records of standing up for the interest of consumers? So I would urge my colleagues to oppose this damaging measure so the CFPB can continue its outstanding work. So thank you, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlelady reserves. The gentleman from Texas.